So we've heard a lot about different uh, aspects of blackberry production and um, how we uh, manage, select the cultivar and, and prune and, and uh, cultural practices. Uh, but now I'd like to focus a little bit on one of the more important uh, aspects of blackberry uh, quality and marketability, that's the post-harvest care. All the good things that we do in terms of uh, field production can be lost literally within hours if we don't follow the right post-harvest management practices. Blackberries have an extremely uh, high market potential. They're uh, uh, in demand 365 days a year. If we uh, consume fresh blackberries, which are one of the most uh, nutritious uh, uh, fruits there are in terms of vitamins and fiber and nutraceuticals, uh, so per capita consumption is significantly increasing. But in order to supply markets, they want consistency and they want quality. That requires appropriate post-harvest management practices. Blackberries are one of the more uh, perishable uh, fruit crops that we have. Uh, they do start to deteriorate immediately after harvest. So let's talk about some of the uh, recommended uh, post-harvest care practices for uh, providing uh, retail markets, wholesale markets, and consumers with that consistency and that quality that they so much deserve and, and, and demand. First of all, we start with um, harvesting the fruit during the coolest part of the day. Obviously, that should be in the morning, but we want to wait until the surface of the fruit is completely dry. We do not uh, ever recommend harvesting blackberries when they are wet. So if there's a shower the night before, we do have to wait till the surface of that fruit is completely dry. Then we begin picking. But ideally we want to pick during the morning, during the coolest part of the day. A couple of reasons for that. Uh, first of all, because there's less energy required uh, in terms of heat removal, field heat removal from the fruit, if the fruit is a little bit cooler, which it will be in the morning. The other thing is, uh, when we touch a blackberry, the higher the temperature of that berry, the more bruising and mechanical injury will be imparted to that berry. So very important to harvest the fruit when the surface is dry, during the coolest part of the day. If we bruise the berry, if we don't harvest it very delicately, and when we do harvest the berry, what we want to do is we want to, gent we want to gently clasp it with our thumb and two fingers, and we want to just gently pull it off. And then we want to transfer it to a field container. We only want to touch it one time before we transfer it to its final uh, market container. And then we want to immediately begin the cooling process. So harvest when the fruit is dry, when the fruit is during the coolest time of the year. Uh, and then we want to start the cooling process in order to optimize its uh, market life and maintain its nutritional quality. Even under ideal conditions, the most that we can ever expect in terms of a shelf life for a consumer or a marketer would be 10 days. But that's following the following rules. Uh, we want to begin that cooling process within one hour after harvest, and we do want to cool that fruit down to temperatures between 32 and 34 degrees Fahrenheit, if possible. However, any cooling is better than nothing. The rule of thumb is for every one hour delay in the beginning of cooling, uh, well, for every one hour that we delay the start of cooling, uh, we lose one day of market life. And if we only have 10 days to begin with, uh, we start delaying cooling for five hours and we've lost five days. So this cooling process is extremely important. We want to start that cooling process in a room cooler, forced air cooling, to get that pulp temperature down to that 32 to 34 degrees Fahrenheit. If we're growing the blackberries in a home, uh, uh, home situation, then of course we want to bring them inside in the refrigerator as soon as possible after harvest. That will maintain the quality, the flavor, uh, the nice, the color. The other thing is if we do not cool the berry uh, soon after harvest, some of the druplets will turn purple. Now this berry here is completely black, but, but uh, as an example, sometimes you see these uh, druplets that are, that, that are purple, and, and that's an indication that we either have mechanical damage or uh, it's just been, the cooling has just been delayed too long and the black druplets turn into purple druplets. So, that's another reason why we want to start the cooling process as soon as possible after harvest. The uh, quality of the, of the blackberry does not improve after harvest. The sweetness will not get any better. So we want to make sure when we pick a blackberry that the entire berry is black. We, we want the, all the individual little fruitlets, we call them druplets, are completely black uh, and firm. And then we want to very carefully uh, remove that fruit from the, uh, from the plant 
and then immediately put it into a market container. Now let me quickly just illustrate the, uh, uh, what, what the commercial uh, folks do is, is they, they use what we call a clamshell. Uh, this is a six ounce or uh, 170 gram uh, punnet, uh, uh, clear plastic clamshell, it's breathable. That's how blackberries are marketed uh, in the retail trade. And, and generally we put in either six ounces, 170 grams, uh, there's uh, other sizes as well, but the six ounce is very, very common. Uh, this would be a nice container to also use uh, for homeowners in a refrigerated situation. It's perforated, it breathes, uh, allows humidity to escape. So this is kind of the, the standard uh, storage and market container for, uh, for, for blackberries. Again, under the right post-harvest management conditions, we can expect to have 10 days of high quality, uh, very um, uh, flavorful, nutritious, delicious uh, Louisiana blackberries.